Today we're going to be talking about safe disposal of wastewater, human excreta and solid waste. This lecture was prepared by Inabugo Chika and Abiona Fever. So join me as we go through the slides. Here just shows a picture of how our earth is full of waste. Waste is literally almost covering the earth. So we begin. The world generates at least 3 million tons of plastic and other solid waste per day, while an average person uses about 100 gallons of water per day, with almost all of it turning into wastewater. Therefore, we see that proper waste disposal of waste plays a big role in the safety and proper functioning of our environment. What is waste? Waste can be defined as any unwanted or unuseful material that is usually discarded. Waste can be divided into four types as follows. Liquid, which includes urine, bathtub water, or water rinsed down the drain. Solid, which includes things like plastic, bottles, wrappers, paper, metals and tins. Sludge, which includes human feces, chemicals used in laboratories or factory, gaseous, chlorine gas or fumes from factories. So we'll be focusing on solid waste and wastewater which is made up of both liquid and sludge waste. Solid waste is any garbage and refuse found in domestic, commercial and industrial locations. The four major types of solid rubbish are glass and ceramics, plastic waste, paper rubbish, metals and tins. Wastewater Wastewater is used water. It contains substances such as human waste, food scraps, herbs, soaps and chemicals. In homes, this is the water from sinks, showers, bathtubs, toilets, washing machines and dishwashers. So now we're going into waste disposal. Waste disposal includes the activities and actions required to manage waste from its creation to its final disposal. What waste disposal aims to reduce adverse effects of human waste on health and the environment. So now we're going to be talking about evolution of waste disposal. In early human history, waste was mainly composed of ash from fire, wood, bones and vegetable waste. The edible matter was used to feed animals and what was remained was disposed of in the ground where it would decompose. As city populations grew, waste management systems became necessary to handle the waste stream. Now we're going to talk about some ancient ways of waste disposal. The first one we have on the screen here is open dumping. In ancient cities, waste were thrown into unpaved streets and roadways where they were left to accumulate. It was not until 320 BC in Athens that the first known law forbidding this practice was established. At that time, a system of waste removal began to evolve. Next we have is open pits. Later on, disposal involved open pits located just outside the city walls. The problem with this was that these pits were used to trash everything and was not regulated, so toxic materials were dumped without caution. So now we have garbage cans and incinerators. It wasn't until the 19th century that technological approach to solid waste management began to develop. Watertight garbage cans were introduced and the first refuse incinerator introduced marked a significant development in solid waste practice. 
Technological advances continued during the first half of the 20th century, including the development of garbage grinders, compaction trucks, and pneumatic collection systems. Then we had solitary landfills. By mid-century, however, it had become evident that open dumping and improper incineration of solid waste were causing problems of pollution and jeopardizing public health. As a result, sanitary landfills were developed to replace the practice of open dumping and to reduce reliance on waste incineration. Then we moved to septic tanks. In the 19th century, sewage was stored in tanks and pumped out to the river at high tides. This led to groundwater pollution and transmission of disease-causing disease organisms. This barbaric sewage disposal method continued to operate until when the state and federal sewage treatment laws forced a stop to it. So now we're going to talk about modern methods of waste disposal. There are several methods of waste disposal nowadays. They vary from city to city, region to region. Here are some common waste disposal methods practiced in Western Africa. The first we have on the list is open burning. The next is controlled dumping. The next is sanitary landfills. Like these are improved designs though, different from the ones we talked about in ancient ways of waste disposal. Then the last we have on the list is reduce, reuse, recycle. And then for human waste, we have water plant treatment. So we're going to talk about open burning. This is mostly practiced in rural areas, semi-urban settlements, and underdeveloped urban areas. However, this method has a strong negative effect on the health of people living in such community, especially if the burning is done within the residential parts of the community. Then we have controlled dumping. It is a method of disposing all kinds of waste in a designated area of land by waste collectors and it is usually controlled by the state or city government. Controlled dumps are commonly found in urban areas. Next we have on the list a sanitary landfill. A sanitary landfill is a very good waste management method that ensures public health hazards and environmental pollution are limited. The disadvantage of this is that it requires a huge investment in construction and operation. Some of these factors include but are not limited to distance from the residential area, proximity to water bodies, water table level of the area the landfill is to be sited, etc. Improved designs will better handle leaching and prevent contamination of air and groundwater. This picture shows an idealized sanitary landfill. We have the reuse, reuse and recycle. The ultimate goal of waste management is to reduce the amount of waste that is being generated in the first place. This method serves to achieve this. How? Reduce. Avoid using disposable plates, spoons, glass, cups, etc. Sell or give away unwanted items rather than train them out. Buy items in bulk or as refuse in order to reduce packaging waste. It can even be as simple as printing on both sides of the paper to reduce paper wastage. So now this is reuse. We use old bags to hold groceries. You can build a compost bin so you can use waste as fertilizer for your garden. Recycle. Bottles, glasses and boxes can be recycled into new things. It can also help in creating awareness. It is one thing to know the solution to a problem. It is another thing to help to create awareness and to ensure that other people follow it. Hence, Public awareness and safe disposal of waste is very important. 
Let us ensure we promote practices that reduce the volume of waste generated, develop rules and regulations to improve waste segregation, destruction and disposal practices. This last slide talks to us about safe disposal laws. To ensure proper disposal of waste and maintain a healthy environment, some agencies have been put up in place to enforce safe disposal laws. These include National Environmental Standards and Regulation Enforcement Agency, Federal Ministry of Environment, FMOE, State Ministries of Environment, Lagos State Waste Disposal Board, LSWDP. These are all safe disposal agencies in Nigeria. Thank you for joining us in this class today. We hope that you check out our other series of lectures. If you have comments, comment in the section below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you in our next class.